Well, good afternoon, uh, YouTube. And what we're doing here is uh, showing the installation of uh, two new front speakers in the uh, 2011 Ultra Classic I have. And I've removed the uh, stock speakers out, which are good speakers. Um, they're uh, five and a quarter inch speakers. And they had a good sound to them and everything, but uh, um, I wanted to get something that had a little more, uh, a fuller range and a better sound in the bass. And uh, I'd seen this on YouTube, and there were a lot of good ones out there. And so um, I searched out a direction and uh, found a company called Enrock Marine that uh, supplied a, a kit, and uh, which included the adapter ring and the speakers and uh, I'm uh, kind of putting this together uh, to see how it works out. I've, I'm really over what I'm doing here. So I'm looking at the box here and it's a dual uh, six and a half inch, they call it a four-way speaker, four ohms. Um, I can't see that real well, but uh, anyhow, but it uh, uh, includes the speakers and the adapter rings, uh, which uh, I've got laid up on my fender there. But uh, in removing the uh, um, fairing off the front and then, or the front part of the fairing, I was able to see the speakers there. And you have to take the uh, um, original mounting ring off. The uh, after you get the speakers off, you have to take the original mounting ring off. And uh, in the uh, on that mounting ring is a, a metal screen with the fabric on the front of it, and that's what you see on the front side of your fairing. And so after you remove the uh, the adapter ring off, then you uh, take that screen off and you apply it to the the new adapter ring, which uh, is uh, it fits just perfectly to that point. And um, what I'm showing here, there's the adapter ring. It has uh, three points uh, to uh, mount it to the fairing, which is like the original. And it fits right in place and you can um, uh, get it all set in there. I did find that the, uh, the screws that came with it uh, were not quite the size that I wanted to have. And so initially I, I thought, well, these would work. So I put some toothpicks in there with some red Loctite and uh, put them in and they seemed to work fine, but uh, I did find that I needed to go with a little larger screw, um, which I, I believe I'm gonna show here, uh, that would uh, actually work better. Uh, so the original screw that came with the kit wasn't as strong as or wide enough, I guess you'd say, to, to really feel like it was going to uh, mount to the, uh, um, to the fairing itself and hold it in place without coming loose. But I did use uh, red Loctite with all of them. It's only three holes. Um, some kits, I say, had four, but I only had three on this, and it's all you ever needed. And um, so I am pointing out where the two top ones are in the bottom there. But uh, it is a, a pretty simple installation. You do want to make sure that you um, note which is your positive and negative uh, leads off of your old speakers so that you make sure that you put the correct uh, connection back on the new speakers because they are marked as a positive and negative on the, on the spade connectors there itself. Um, I am pointing out the lower section there where that uh, screw uh, needed to be a little bit bigger to go into all of them. So I ended up replacing them. But once I got them set in there, as, I, as you can see, it, was, it firmed up pretty well. Um, in the, um, uh, the installation, of course, uh, here's the speaker itself. It's a polycone with a foam uh, surround and it has a nice mid-range speak, uh, speaker in the center and then it actually gives you two different uh, pitzoids tweeters which is uh, that's why they call it a four-way uh, uh, speaker itself 
and a nice metal uh, housing for the speaker itself and a large magnet. It is a, a DLS uh, 654 model number uh, with dual and it is a 4 ohm speaker with uh, 40 RMS if I'm not mistaken but it, it's a it's a well adapted to this particular application and uh, it worked out real well and so um, I think I think what it's going to do is going to sound really well I've got to get this put together uh, and finish up the installation and then uh, we will uh, get back to uh, a follow up to show how the uh, the unit sounds. I had put it up on an earlier video, but I had uh, some uh, problems with a copyrighted song on it, so I had to it had to be taken down. But I'll be doing with the GPS next. Well, we've uh, completed the the project to put uh, the Zumo 660 on the uh, on my bike and I haven't uh, of course got the outer fairing put on but um, as you can see right here they talk about attaching um, a three and a half or 3.5 millimeter uh, cable to your auxiliary input on your radio and I've just routed it like so around that way I hope you can see it and then it goes through the handlebar opening right there and uh, that comes back and then comes around here. I've got it routed up through here. And then, of course, it connects to my uh, uh, output on the cable from the um, Zuma 660 uh, motorcycle mount. It is a, um, a little bit of a trick to get this all put together. Um, not that difficult at all. It takes about want to I've been on this for about an hour and a half right now and taking my time with it um, the big issue here is, is of course uh, in the kit it, I mentioned earlier it includes this uh, road tech this is in the Harley kit it gives you a template kind of a clear plastic template that you set up into this spot right here and there's a little uh, old marking there to drill point and uh, I started out with like a, uh, oh, a 16th or an 8th inch drill once I got it marked and uh, drilled the hole and then I just gradually went up to a 7 32nds hole. They said 5 16 but I tried 7 32nds I felt like that was sufficient for this particular hole here. Um, then once you do that then the gasket kit that is behind the uh, mount itself, uh, you put that, uh, mount that with the screw uh, onto the plate here, and then it, in the center of it, it has a, uh, um, and I'll point that out, in the cutout or on the gasket, this fits in the center, it's, or it's attached to the center, and you got a center hole, that if I can get that close enough, you can see that, you uh, mark that spot on your fairing, and that's where you start to drill. And you drill a basic hole out. And with the Zumo 660 kit that I have here, and they even stated in the Harley uh, instructions that if you get a 590 or whatever, uh, you may have to elongate the hole in order to make it fit. If you see this, it's kind of a rectangular shape. So I'm basically, once I got the hole drilled, I measured out the distance Widthwise here and width, width and length, and I uh, end up using um, rat tail, rat tail file, a square uh, square rough uh, cut file, and I tried the big one, but the square rough cut you need something small like this to get in there, and I was able to uh, rework the hole uh, enough to where I could get the cable through, of course, and uh, get this this portion. This is the biggest portion to get into. Um, through the hole up here and once you get that done then uh, and then the other thing is is that on the uh, power cord for the adapter uh, kit you have to take the fuse out in order to get it through because it will not fit through as well so once you get those through 
Then you uh, position the, the gasket correctly on the fairing and mark the hole down at the lower point here. And uh, then I just, like I said, started with one small hole and just graduated on up to where it was uh, uh, the right size to get it in there. And you put your washer on the back and the lock nut on the back. It's uh, one of those uh, nylon lock nuts. And you don't tighten them down too tight. You just get them tight enough to where it holds really well because it's not going to back out. And then on the, uh, on the, on the uh, GPS itself, the four screws here that uh, go through the kit and mount into the plate, I put a little Loctite on those. Those, those screws came with uh, the Harley kit, and uh, that was sufficient. One thing to make sure if you have one of these setups is that when you get this set in there, you want to make sure that this is down tight because then the, the GPS won't come off. But you can see it's a pretty snazzy little setup. It uh, fits really well. I'll take the, the GPS off for a second and let you see how that fits. And you, you route your cable. Um, through an indentation on the mount itself and of course it goes on through and then with the with this particular setup I uh, I got an extra one off of um, Amazon got an extra cover so when you're not using your GPS it, all your connections are all nicely put so it's a nice installation it looks nice and clean um, I think it's going to work out just fine. It's positioned correctly. Uh, gaskets in there nice and tight so that you aren't, if you have any water, whatever, it's not going to seep down and get inside your fairing at all. Of course, you have the split the gasket that you put here, and that helps seal that as well. You could uh, go a little further and put a little silicone around that if you wanted to. Um, you get a lot of cord, give you plenty of cord to work with. Your power. Uh, it comes off your headlight. It's uh, there are two low, um, core, uh, power leads that come out. In Europe, I believe they're used for your driving lights or some other lights. But um, it's marked uh, orange white is your positive, and of course black is your negative. And in the Harley kit, they give you a couple of uh, um, male spades uh, to hook your wire to. I soldered those on. And then you just slide those into the uh, uh, plastic uh, covers that come with it. And once they go in, they're locked in. And then you just uh, snap them together onto the original connections here. And then, in this case, I taped them all up so that it would be uh, um, not loose and give a little more protection against uh, any kind of inclement weather that you might be in. And then I just wrapped up the excess cord and so forth uh, and just taped it to the main harness for the speedometer and tachometer up here on the top above the radio and then of course this is the plug for your auxiliary this is the input for uh, you can use it or output I should say for your mp3 player on the Zuma 660 or um, if you have uh, voice instructions going out uh, on turns and so forth it'll feed back into your radio and as long as you have it on the auxiliary uh, setting uh, you'll be able to hear those as well so that's just a little plus the kit does not include the the wire uh, as far as Zuma or Zumo 660 does not include this uh, jumper cable in the Harley kit if you buy the Harley harness uh, which is this hookup for the that mounts onto your mount uh, then they include it with theirs but uh, you can buy these uh, these little jumper cables for little or nothing, you know, four to five dollars on Amazon, or if your local dealer or electronic store has it, you're all set. So um, that's it. It's really easy to do. Just take your time, follow the instructions. I read them for several hours just to reread it and make sure that I was doing everything correctly. Um, I did mention earlier, and I mentioned it on this. In an earlier video, I did the um, setup for changing the five and a quarter to six and a half inch speakers. I bought the kit off of Amazon. It's uh, this particular kit comes from a marine company called uh, 
I, um, I can't remember the name of the company I bought it from, but they sell the dual uh, 654 speakers, six and a half inch speakers. It's DLS 654 dual speakers, and they, they're a four ohm speaker, and they work just fine even though it's a two ohm system within Harley on the Harman Kardon. Uh, didn't have any problem with that. Uh, I was able to utilize the existing brackets uh, for for support uh, that uh, were on the five and a quarter inch speakers, and so that uh, you know made it a, a nicer installation itself. In addition to that, I used the JM uh, fairing insulation on the front of the fairing, and. Uh, uh, let's see if I can get over here to where I can spin this up where you can see this. Um, if uh, you can see the installation there. And that actually tightened up the sound for the, for the speakers. And it, uh, it really worked out well. So um, I had it up on a YouTube before. And I had to take it down, or they took it down for me because I had some sounds on there that I shouldn't have had. So they were copyrighted. So anyway, I'll show you this in a minute. I'm going to button her up and put the uh, GPS on there and show you how it all works. Well, here I am. I've, I've got this, uh, got the bike all buttoned back up. I've got the fairing back on. Um, I did want to show you one thing that I... Uh, added is a uh, LED headlight and driving light kit that I got off of Amazon. I got a screaming deal on that for about a hundred dollars and by the time I got the adapter ring it was about a hundred forty but it, it turned out really well and uh, maybe I'll, I can show that with that light on but it's that's a pretty simple hookup and it had to readjust my driving lights in height but uh, I'll tell you what, if you want visibility, that's the way to go. Anyway, so I'm going to move on around here and uh, give you a, a look at what I've got done here. And I may have to pause this and get things set up. But I've got my uh, Zuma 660 mounted onto the mount. And I'll take it off real quick here to show you. Of course, here's the... Uh, the mount itself and as you can see I was talking about the uh, easing the cable from the kit itself around and it goes right into the mount and into the into the inside of the fairing itself and they, in the Zuma 660 they give you um, two mounting uh, kits uh, one is for uh, installation like this where you put it on your motorcycle whether it be on the a handlebar mount or whatever and they give you the ram mount and so forth to do that with or you can do it with a Harley in this case and then they also give you a mount set up for uh, if you want to put it in your car because on the Zuma 616 it, it knows when either you're on the motorcycle or if you're riding in a Car. So the GPS is a very versatile piece of equipment. In the uh, in the kit, it comes with a cover, which I have here, and that covers up your connection there and keeps that all nice and clean looking. So if you're not running around with the GPS on, you can take that and, and cover it up. And then what I was talking about is this top plate. When it's pushed up, you can see it's raised up there. Let's see if I can get it real close. You can see it's raised up. If that's not down, move my hand here. If that's not pushed in all the way, like it is there, uh, your GPS will drop right off of the mount and you'll lose it. And I've heard guys getting where it's bounced around and they've went and got it and it was fine. But uh, let me put this, uh, and then on the GPS. That's the GPS itself. Of course, that's the connections in the back. Let me see if I can turn that around. And then I, I bought this uh, hood for it. And it's just put on with Velcro. And um, it actually shades the sun enough to where 
uh, you don't get um, I don't want to say this you don't get the sun, sun uh, glare on your screen so it uh, it really turns out really well so what I'm gonna do here I cannot get myself messed up is turn my ignition on and when you have your ignition on your Garmin will come up and of course uh, trying to do where it won't get a glare in there because I've got different lights going and it goes through its boot up and of course you have to tell the degree and then you can show your map there and since I haven't had it on for a while it's trying to acquire so there it is it's acquiring my my neighborhood I don't know if even if that's visible I think it is because I've done it before and uh, back okay it gives me my location so if I go back to menu and I go to tools and media player and then I can uh, play and then I'll have that going right here and what I'm going to do is turn my radio on and let's see if it's coming up is it on? I guess it's on, yeah Pause this for a second. So um, right now I've got this. I've got my GPS on on uh, the MP3 player. I've got it set up where it's plugged into my auxiliary input here on the on the radio, and I've got it set for auxiliary and. Uh, so now, you can hear it coming through my speaker up here. And I don't know how well that sounds to you, but it sounds pretty cool to me. And uh, so it, it makes a nice simple installation. Um, you can have your MP3 player loaded up in your GPS. And you can have music playing all, you know, if you're out of uh, radio range or whatever and um, I think it sounds pretty nice you know and you can also uh, set your GPS up to, with Bluetooth to uh, free wire send a free wire and you can hear it in your helmet if you have a, a Bluetooth uh, headset where you can listen to it in your, in your intercom system so but uh, and then I can go back and listen to my mp3 player and still have my GPS going which is a real plus so if you're riding an older electric glide or street glide or whatever you know that has the uh, doesn't have the uh, the new radio systems that the uh, newer models have yeah this is a nice setup and I know some of you out there have it and there weren't much in the way of installation on it but um, speaker upgrades are always there and so so it's a it's a nice setup and I think you, you'll enjoy it so so this is gives you the look there and then before I go off I'm going to show you the headlight system I hope it won't be too bright but it uh, it's pretty cool I know there's a lot of options out there but I uh, am a real proponent of LED headlights and driving lights um, there are a lot of varieties out there and I think uh, if you look around you'll find a good setup so so anyway uh, 
this is it for this particular show and I'm gonna get this patched into my uh, setup and uh, hopefully that will give you a little bit of a look as to what uh, what the deal is of course I've got this angle wrong but uh, hope it hope it comes out well and we'll go from there